ستارت يا احمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع هداه من يوم الدين Tonight is the 28th night of Sha'aban 1444 which is equivalent to the 19th of March 2023 and this is now the 11th class of the 40 hadiths of Imam al nawawi rahimahullah and we have reached hadith 20 al hadith al ishroon an abi mas'ud uqbah ibn amr al ansari al badri radiyallahu an qal qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna mimma adraka an nas min kalam al nubuwwat al ula idha lam tastahi fasna' ma shi't rawahu al bukhari Hadith number 20, on the authority of Abu Mas'ud Uqba bin Amr al-Ansari al-Badri, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, verily, from what was learnt by the people from the speech of the earliest prophecy is, if you feel no shame, then do as you wish, al-Bukhari. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومواله. Somebody just put me this microphone next to me. طيب كده شو؟ As we have heard after praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى in passing salutation upon His Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. We have this hadith number twenty. From Al Arba'in and Nawawiyah. Hadith number 20 from Al Arba'in and Nawawiyah. So we almost reached half, half of the book. And this hadith is one of the principles, as we have said, all these hadiths are great principles. And this hadith is one of those which has been known not just at the time of the Prophet of Allah, but known from the Prophets before him. And it shows in general that modesty, haya, shyness, feeling ashamed if there's something wrong, is one of those things which are praised, characteristics which are upheld high in the Sharia. And it is one of the noble akhlaq which the prophets had inherited one after the other until it came to this ummah, ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here, that the haya, if, if it is to do with being ashamed of doing something haram, then this is a threat. And if it is something to do which is not prohibited in the shara, then it is uh, upon a request, not a command. So we know that the person whom his haya is not there, then this person, number one, he will dare to do things which are displeasing to Allah. He will do things to do things that the people demise and despise. As we have here, one of the scholars called Ibn Rajab, Rahimahullah, in Jami' Ulum al Hikam, he have mentioned in interpretation of this hadith that this is something from the Prophet Sallam to indicate what has been, as I said, inherited from the previous prophets. And when he says, if you're not having hayat, and do what you wish, it has two main meanings. The one, that it is not a command to do what you want, but it's actually to criticize and to prohibit and ban the person to do something. And the people of knowledge have two ways of interpreting it. They say that this is a command of meaning a threat. That means... If you haven't got any haya, then do what you wish. Or Allah Azza wa Jal will punish you for that. إِعْمَلُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ As Allah Jalli said, do what you want. Allah knows and acquainted of what you do. Here, when he said Allah Azza wa Jal, do what you want, it is not like an open check for you to go and do shirk and do haram. But if you're going to do it, then do it. Then it's a threat from Allah that he will punish you accordingly. And also Allah Jalli said, فَعْبُدُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ مِن دُونِهِ Worship beside Allah whoever you wish. 
So Allah is not telling you to go and worship other than Allah, but he's saying that if it is the case and you have no shame and no fear from Allah's punish, then you do choose whoever you want to associate with the Almighty Azza wa Jal. And this is one of the meanings which has been chosen by some of the scholars. The second way of that first meaning, it is like a command, but it means that it is telling us, meaning that if uh, the person has no shame of what he does, then normally it is the case he will do whatever he wishes. So the prevent the one that prevents the person from doing the haram and doing the things which are bad is actually his modesty and his haya. So if the person has got no haya, he will definitely drown into doing things which are not supposed to be done. And Allah Azza wa Jal told us not to do it. It's exactly like the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَنْ كَذَبَ عَلَيَّ عَامِدًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ He who does make a lie upon me, and that is deliberately, then let him prepare his seat in the hellfire. Here, let him prepare his seat in his fire. That doesn't mean you go and, you know, pick up a seat. But it means that this is the abode of a person who is basically making a lie upon the Prophet of Allah. If you do so, then definitely you have a seat in the hellfire. إذا لم تستحي فاصنع مأشد. That's the first meaning. Second meaning, that is, uh, according to the superficial of it. That means if that um, something which uh, you're not ashamed to do it before Allah, and you're not ashamed to do it before the people, something which is halal because it is from the obedience act, then do it, don't be ashamed. So it is like if it is a noble act, uh, something which is good, something that Allah Azza wa would champion, and people are shy to do it, and you have no shy, your shyness, not to do it, uh, to do it, then do it. So do this, and this is one of the meanings, as, well, as I said, second meaning, which is being championed by other scholars. So we have one which says a threat, which is a criticism, and the other one it says that you have to do it because if people not doing it, and you have power, and you have, I would say, daring to do it, then do it, which is if it's a good act. But normally it is the case. It is being said to the person who is doing haram or doing shameful act. And he has no concern and no consideration, an inconsiderate person to any moralities, to any shameful acts, to any things that the people deem to be, this is the norm. But yet this person just throw these things in the wall and he doesn't care. So Prophet Allah said, Fasma Mashid. I used to have a bookshop and I don't allow people to come and smoke in a country which is impossible to find a person without a cigarette. It's just only when he comes to the masjid, maybe he does not hold his cigarette. But to buy something in the shop, this is something new. No way that he will come inside and will put off his cigarette. So I put so many signs in my shop saying to them, it's a bookshop. Then Smoking is not allowed. Smoking is haram. Smoking is prohibited. And the last size, one after the other, it's a shop which is you go through it. And the last one it says, "Ida lam tastahi fasma mashid." If you have no shame, then do what you like. Right. Now the haya is of two types. Haya, which is something that Allah Azza wa Jal chipped into you, is part of you, and it's one of the noble characteristics which Allah provides to His slave. And Allah Azza wa makes it one of your uh, you could morals and uh, uh, manners as well. So Allah's Messenger had praised such a haya, and He said, "Al haya ula yati illa bi khay. Haya only does bring you good, so it will prevent you from embarking upon haram thing. And the second type, it is a type which you earn by your obedience to Allah, by getting close to Allah, by knowing. How great is Allah? You earn it. So the first one, you've been chipped with. Allah provided you. The second one, you earn it. And that you know that Allah Azza wa knows what you're doing, whether you are on your own or between people. And that is one of the highest branches of Iman. It is actually one of the highest darajat or branches of Ihsan. And this haya is a result of the person looking at 
the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him and also contemplating his shortcomings in fulfilling his thanks to his Lord. So if the person has been robbed and stripped from the haya which has been earned, then there is nothing that's going to prevent him from doing haram and doing shameful acts. From the thing that you could benefit from this hadith, that the haya is one of the noble characteristics, and it's actually the haya is the manner of Islam. Qala Rasulullah inna li kulli deenin khuluqa. Each religion that came with the prophets, each legislation, and the legislation and the deen that came with Islam is haya. So all deens, deen haram, deen kufr, deen shirk, all of it has got manners, a particular you know, manner that it rotates around it. And the manner that Islam rotates around it is haya, modesty. And it's one of the acts of the hearts, haya. And from this hadith, also encouragement and prompting to be a person who is adorated and beautified with the manner of haya. And if the person is stripped from the haya, then it is a result. It will be at the consequences. It's going to be this person will fall in all sorts of evil. Now, this haya, most of it is praised, but there are haya which is not praised. What type of haya which is not praised? I'll tell you a story which is being a question given to Sheikh Ibn Uthameen, rahimahullah. Story just keeps in my mind right now that a person who is doing Umrah or Hajj. And you know, as a man, if you're doing Umrah or Hajj, then you are a person required to take off all your clothes and put the towels of the Ihram. So this person, he says to the Sheikh, Ibn Uthaymi, I'm shy to take off my clothes and put my Ihram clothes. I want to put my underwear. You know, the panties, the panties, to put a panty. I don't like to be stripped, you know, I've never been like this, and it's modesty. And he said, this is not modesty. This is not haya. This is something blameworthy. It's not praiseworthy. Because this is not the haya that's supposed to be in this place. Because this is something that the Prophet, who is more modest than you, had done it. And he commanded you to do it. So, and even he insisted, I could pay a penalty as long as I'm putting my panties. He wants to pay the expiation. Okay? Al kafar. Said, no, there's no kafar. This is mod modesty is not in the right place. It's not in the right place. So this modesty is not correct. So let's just talk about some of those examples which modesty is not correct. Number one is the modesty that the person who is not seeking knowledge. That's not good. That's a blameworthy. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Ni'mah and Nisa, Nisa al Ansar. Good women they are. Who are they? The women who belong to the Ansar, the inhabitants of the Medina. Lam yamna'hunna hayauhun. The modesty did not prevent them. And yet, afaqahna fi deen. To seek knowledge in the religion. This hadith of Allah Muslim. Also, we have the Prophet ﷺ, hadith of Suhaith Bukhari, where the Messenger of Allah, he was addressing the people. Then there were three people came in. One found a spot for him or a gap. So he sat to listen. And the other one, he sat really at the end, at the back of the gathering of the majlis. The third one left. Then the Prophet ﷺ said to the people, shall I inform you of those three people? He's talking now in general, but he's talking about actually those people who came in. He said, those three people came to a majlis of knowledge, circle of deen, knowledge. One of them, قال, awa fa awa Allah. he came to a spot, a gap, uh, space and he sat and he wanted to basically get closer to Allah so Allah got him closer Allah protected him second one stahya. he got modesty shy so he sat at the back so Allah is shy from him as well so is that good? no good because it's shyness if you're shy then Allah is shy from you he's not going to give you the, the, the thing that you are after can I ask just brother to sit down here if you you listen to this hadith, I mean, <laughs> should really encourage you to sit here at the back. Shall I? The second one is sits at the back. He's shy. He's shy of him. 
On the third, he left Arab. Allah left him. Third one, he left. He's the worst. Allah left him. That's haya, which is no good in seeking the knowledge. Also from the haya, which is not good, is not to say the haq when you are able to do it. Fasda' bima umirt. Fasda' Allah. Fasda' means the word sada'a. Say the word, the word of haq. Even it's going to be a consequence that you're not going to do with death. It's not ikrah. You're not being compelled. You're not going to be in prison. Fasda' bil haq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Inna Allah la yastahyi min al-haq. Allah does not shy from the what? The haq, from the truth. So these are the two meanings of إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاسْطَعْ مَشِي There is a third meaning which is not champion, which is not farfetch, I would say. And that is the person, he wants to do good, then he leaves it. Why? Because he is shy from the people. Because he's scared of the riya. You see, the shaitan comes according to what the person is. So if the person is a sinner, then the shaitan, he will come to him as a person, will encourage him to do the sin. But if this person, he is uh, doing the ta'ah, and he's, mashallah, upon obedience of Allah, azza wa jal, and away from the sinning, then this shaitan will whisper to him this, Whatever you're doing from the ta'a is riya, showing off. So this person, instead of doing the good, he will stop believing that if I did it, it will be counted as a showing off. Do you understand that? And that is, as I said, far-fetched. But it is true. It is true. that The shaitan does come to the sheikh as a sheikh. And it comes to the sinner as a sinner. It comes from the angle where he can attack you and leave the biggest impact on the person. Let's now share with Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, some of those haya that he had given us. He said, uh, الحياه على عشرة أوجه. The haya is being given in 10 ways. قال حياء الجناية. The haya from the crime, something bad you've done. And from that, Adam, alayhi salam, when he left Jannah, fleeing. Because he was uh, remembering what he has done regarding eating from the tree, which he has been prohibited to do so. Also, we have the haya of the taqsir, haya of falling short, like the haya of the angels, whom they make the speech of Allah day and night. No relaxation. And on the day of resurrection, when they bring the scale, the mizan, and how precise is that mizan? And then they ask the old Lord, who is this scale for? So Allah, he would say, to whosoever I wish from my slave. So they would say, subhanak, glorified be to you, O Lord. Ma abadna ka haqqa ibadati. We did not worship you the right worship. So we call it, this is the haya of falling short. So the angel were falling short, uh, even though they were making tasbih non-stop. But they thought they did not worship Allah, the right worship. This is called haya. Haya also al-ijlal, exaltation, lifting the Almighty up, azza wa jal. So the person, the more he knows about his Lord, the more he will have modesty, haya. Subhanallah. And the haya al-karam, haya, the person of being generous. So this haya, that made the Prophet ﷺ not to ask the companions to leave after he had made the marriage with his wife Zainab. And the companions stayed behind. They are still eating and they're still chit-chatting and talking to each other. And the Prophet of Allah is going in and out. Anas is with him as well, in and out. He's just basically giving a hint. I mean, come on, I want to be with my wife on my own. Those companions stayed behind. And the Prophet of Allah was shy to tell them. And this is called modesty as well. Haya also haya is al-hishma. That is to feel shy of a certain person because of his rank, because of his being a senior, because of his... Like for example, we have the haya of Ali ibn Abi Talib. To ask the Prophet 
about the rule of we call it uh, uh, المدي, which is the fluid that secretes from the person or discharges from the person when he sees his wife or cuddles with her. So that is called madha. Because of the Prophet of Allah being the Prophet and more of that as well because the wife of his is the daughter of the Prophet, Fatima. So he was shy to ask the Prophet directly what is the rule of a person who discharges the madhi. The madhi. The madhi is a said white thin secretion that comes out at foreplay. It's not the ejaculation of the sperm. So because of his wife and his daughter of the Prophet, he was shy to ask. So he sent somebody to ask on his behalf. Also, we have the haya of the person feeling himself insignificant. That is the person when he's have haya from his Lord, asking him for things time and time again. And yet he gets them. So he feels modest. He feels haya, shy of himself. I don't deserve that. Allah is giving me and I don't deserve that. That's all as well haya. This is the interpretation in full, alhamdulillah, in this hadith. So remember this hadith. Uh, the hadith from the first words of the prophethood is if you're not shy, if you're having with istihya, do what you like. Now, I'm Ahmed, hadith 21. Jazakumullah khairan, Sheikh. Al hadith al hadi wal ishroon an Abi Amr waqila Abi Amra Sufyan. ابن عبد الله رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله قل لي في الإسلام قولا لا أسأل عنه أحدا غيرك قال قل آمنت بالله ثم استقم رواه مسلم حديث number 21 on the authority of Abu Amr and he is also called Abu Amr Sufyan bin Abdullah الثقفي may Allah be pleased with him who said I said, O Messenger of Allah, tell me something about Al-Islam which I can ask of no one but you. He, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Say, I believe in Allah, and then be steadfast. Muslim. Hadith 21. Before I go to Hadith 21, I would just like to remind for those who are taking notes, Hadith 20 is actually hadith number 62 in Riyad al-Salihin. Hadith 20 in Al-Arwain al nawiyah in Riyad al-Salihin, the same author, Imam al nawi is hadith 62. Hadith 21 is actually hadith 85 and also repeats itself with more wordings, hadith 1517. So 85 and 1517, 1517. This hadith from... Abi Amrah, his name is Sufyan ibn Abdullah, Al-Thaqafi, Al-Thaqafi, from Bani Thaqif. He said, Messenger of Allah, Qulli, say to me in Islam, a saying, I don't ask anyone else after you. No one else. Another narration, tell me of a something that I will hold on to it. He said to him, Qul, say, Amantu Billah. I believe in Allah. Another narration, narration of uh, Imam Tirmidhi, said, Qul Rabbi Allah. Say, my Lord is Allah. Thummastaqib, then steadfast. Then the other narration, which is, this is in Muslim, the other narration in Tirmidhi adds as well. So I said, Messenger of Allah, what is the thing that you fear upon me the most? So he took hold of his tongue, the Prophet Sallallahu and then he said, had uh, this pointing to his tongue. The companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions of all prophets are keen to ask, what is their salvation? But because the Prophet of Allah is the last of the prophets and the most eminent, so his companions are the best after the prophets. So after the prophets comes the companions of our prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Then the rest of the disciples and companions of other prophets. That is why they were more keen than the disciples, the Hawari, and the companions of other prophets in asking about salvation. 
how to get to paradise and how to save themselves from the hellfire. So they want to know about their deen in details. This is the question of Sufyan ibn Abdullah radiallahu anh, very clear in that. So he asks him this great question. He wants an answer from the Prophet of Allah, uh, the one whom is being given Jawami al kalim the collective words, words which are few in number, but they're far-fetched in meaning. So the Prophet sallam, he had given it what he wanted. Just this question, he said to him, that is, give me something, hold on to it. Something in Islam, and I will not ask anybody else after you. So the Prophet Allah gave him those few words. So he said to him, Qul Rabbi Allah, say my Lord is Allah, or Qul Amantu Billah, say I believe in Allah, Thummastaqib, then have istiqamah. So you have to utter with your tongue, your Iman, which consists of all those things which are pillars of Iman. And when Islam is mentioned on its own, it includes Iman. And when Iman is mentioned in its own, then it includes Islam and vice versa. So, but if Islam is mentioned with Iman together as two words, and Islam wal Iman, then the Islam is concerned about the output and the Iman is concerned about the inward. But when it comes on its own, Islam includes the outward and the in inward. And if Iman mentioned on its own, it includes the outward and the inward. But if they are mentioned together, al-Islam wal Iman, al-Islam is for the outward, like Salah, Zakah, Hajj, and the Iman of the inward, al-Iman of Allahi, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rusulihi, wa al-yawm al-akh, wa al-qaba, khayrihi, wa sharrihi. Tayyip. So, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, you have to enter into the Iman and whatever is being given to us in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So outward and inward are included. And then he told him to have istiqamah, steadfast. Allah azza wa he said, Ya ayu alladhina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatih. O you who believe, fear Allah as you should be feared. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except in a state of Islam. That means stay on the obedience of Allah. Stay to what Allah commanded you to be until death come to you while you are on the same good situation. So from the hadith, we gather the following. The keenness of the Sahaba to ask about the things and matters related to their deed and also the good question of Sufyan ibn Abdullah al-Thaqafi radiyallahu anhu wa ardah which shows how intellectual and how good he is and that he is keen to be one of those people in paradise. And thirdly, al-Iman billah, to believe in Allah and whatever comes in a book, sunnah of the Prophet sallam, is a must, a pass. And number four is to steadfast, to be upon the haqq, steadfast. Don't drift away. Don't waver. And this istiqama uh, upon Iman has virtues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had showed those virtues. In his book, we find in the following verse, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Those who had said, our Lord is Allah. That's why the Prophet of Allah he said to Sufyan ibn Abdullah Thaqafi, Say, Rabbi Allah. Say, my Lord Allah. So those who say, Allah says, our Lord is Allah. Then they steadfast. That's why the Prophet of Allah told Sufyan Abdul Thaqafi, be steadfast. So, Angels will descend upon them. Don't fear. And don't be in sorrow and grief. And have a glad, glad tiding of paradise. This is the one you've been promised. Also another verse, in the ones who had said, our Lord is Allah in, and the steadfast, there is no grief upon, fear upon them or sorrow. And those are the wells of paradise. They are there in forever to abide. As a recompense of what they do. So, the steadfastness brings you angel descending down upon and giving you glad tiding of paradise and not to fear and not to have sorrow. Fear from what is coming ahead. 
fear of and sorrow from what is you leaving behind in the dunya, maybe leaving children. Don't worry, the children will be looked after. The Tanazzanu Arihi Mullaik, angels will descend. When do they descend? Ibn Kafir, he says something that will gather all the saints. They descend upon the person when he's about to die, and when he's in his grave, and when he resurrects. All of those places, the angel will descend upon him. So when you're about to die, these angels will come to you before you die. Don't worry, don't be scared. Have a glad telling of what's coming ahead. And also in the grave itself. Don't worry, what is coming ahead is good for you. Thirdly, when you come out of the grave, these angels will bring you the mount. Believe you will have a mount to go to the land of the gathering. They're not going to come walking. As for those kuffar or billah corrupted, they will walk on their faces. They will bring you a mount and they'll repeat that first same verse. Abshiru bil jannah, la takhafu wa la tahzan. They will tell you, don't fear, don't be sorrow. We are with you. Just like we were with you in the dunya and we were with you in the grave, we were with you as well in the hereafter. They are with you. So this is uh, amazing for the person who is a believer. Also, the istiqama brings you rizq, brings you provision. If they to be steadied fast upon the straight path, which is Allah's shara, then we would have given them abundance of rain, rain that produced corrupt, not brings flood. So the Imam al Qurtubi, regarding this verse, he says, if those disbelievers, the kuffar, that they believed in Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will give them a wide provision in this dunya. Also, the istiqamah, Allah Azza wa Jal commanded his Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to have the istiqamah. Fastaqim kama umirt. Allah says to the Prophet as a command, Fastaqim. Have istiqamah, just like you're being commanded. That's why Al-Hasan, rahimahullah, he says, Hasan al-Basri, قال, O oh Lord, Allahumma anta rabbuna, you are our Lord, farzuqna al-istiqama. Give us and, and grant us the istiqama. Now, when a person, he is asking Allah Azza wa Jal the istiqama, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be falling into sins. You are a human being. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, fastaqimu ilayhi wa Have steadfastness. Uh, on the path of the deen and at the same time seek forgiveness because if you think that istiqama there's no seek of forgiveness no so this is an indication that somehow you're going to fall short somehow you're not going to do what everything Allah told you to do so you seek forgiveness which means repentance to Allah Azza wa Jal and that is part of the istiqama Prophet Sallallahu he said to Mu'ad ibn Jabal Fear Allah wherever you are. That's his tiqama. Then he said to him, regarding his shortcoming, and follow up the bad deeds with the good deeds. And this good deed will remove the effect of that bad, deed, bad deeds, will take it away. And also the Prophet ﷺ told us that the people will never be achieving 100% istiqama all the time. And that's why the Prophet said, قال, سددوا وقاربوا. سددوا وقاربوا. Get as close as possible to the haqq. Make sure you have sadan. That means you can't get me 100%. سددوا. So the 100% there, you can't get it. Be as close, 99.9, .9, 98, 97. As much as you get. سددوا وقاربوا. So the sadan is actually is the reality of the istiqamah. It's, this is the istiqamah itself which is to make sure that you are correct as much as you can in your sayings and in your actions and in your goals. Muqaraba, that is to get as well, as close as possible from hitting the target. So as long as you are having the intention to have a, uh, the, the, the right thing, so don't worry if you had not hit it 100%. You just about Allah Azza wa Jal will give you the reward for that. And also, the most important thing in istiqamah you need to care about is the istiqamah of your qalb, your heart. This is the king of all your limbs. Every morning, those limbs, they will come in humility before their sheikh. The sheikh, 
okay? All of them, they come to the sheikh, and the sheikh is their tongue. They fear Allah regarding us. Uh, for verily, if you're straight, we will be straight with you. If you are crooked, we will be crooked with you. Now, this tongue will never be straight unless the heart is straight. Because the tongue translates what is in the heart. The tongue is the one who would express what is in the real heart. So every day, the Asbah ibn Adam, every morning, the old limbs will come before the tongue, saying to him, fear Allah regarding us. Don't take us to help us. Basically, we are with you. If you are a good man, we'll be with you. Good. If you are crooked, we'll be crooked. So the Prophet Sallam in that hadith, which is the hadith of Yan Abdullah Taqafi, the narration which we added from Sunnah al Tirmidhi, he said, The Messenger of Allah informed me of the thing that you fear the most upon me. So what did he say? He pulled out his tongue and he said, This, this is the one I fear upon you. And the Prophet Sallam listened to this hadith. He had said in a hadith, our Shaykh al Albani makes it authentic in Sahih Targheem. He said, No way that the belief of any person will be straight until his heart is straight. So if you have, you want to, no way you're going to be straight until your heart is straight. And no way your heart will be straight until your tongue is straight. And no way your tongue is going to be straight. And no way you're going to be entering paradise until what? Something which is never, people will never think about it. Until until his neighbor is safe against those things that comes from him, from you. Those things that he's fearing. I don't know what he's going to be doing. The neighbor of yours, he says, oh my God, he came now. I don't know, can I put the music loud? I don't know, he can let his children scratch my car. I don't know, he's going to be making, he's scared. I don't know, he's going to build into my land. I don't know. Uh, you don't want to live with such a neighbor. So if you are one of these people, you have been stripped from the istiqamah because you're not going to enter Jannah. Tawheed maybe later on will make you enter Jannah. You're not going to have istiqamah because your heart has a good istiqamah. And as well, your tongue has got no istiqamah. So the Prophet of Allah said, لا يستقيم عبد أو إبان عبد The belief of a person will never be steadfast with istiqama حتى يستقيم قلبه until his heart will be istiqama ولا يستقيم ولا يستقيم قلبه حتى يستقيم لسانه until his tongue is straight ولا يستقيم لسانه ولا يدخل الجنة حتى يأمن جاره بوعيقه From the reasons of istiqama Remember, a note down. Number one, dua. Make dua. اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلبي على دينك اللهم يا مثبت القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك O Lord The one who affirms and make the hearts on istiqama straight fast steadfast make my heart steadfast as well اللهم أعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك So I need Allah's Azza wa Jal's help So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with my dua sincerity to give me istiqama Secondly to read the Quran and contemplate for Allah Jal, he said, يُنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكْ And then he said, وَرَتَّلْنَهُ تَرْتِيلًا In order to affirm your heart, and we have recited it for you. وَرَتَّلْنَهُ تَرْتِيلًا So recitation of the Quran, contemplation of the meaning, will give you istiqamah. Now if the person has istiqamah in this dunya, then Allah will give him the hidayah on the day of resurrection. He will be going to paradise. As Ibn Qayyim, he said, the person who has istiqamah in this dunya, he has been on the straight path, then Allah Azza will make it an easy way of you being on the sirat, on top of helfa, to pass it because of your istiqamah in this dunya, and you did not drift here and there, Allah will make you istiqamah on that sirat, which is on top of helfa, you're not going to drift here and there, all the way to Jannah. Also, لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزن. No grief or no fear. Who goes to the istiqam? Don't worry about your children. You're going to leave behind. And that's why people they tend to go and play around with their inheritance and they make a will unjustly to protect their children, thinking that, oh, I'm leaving them. Let me give them more than the other brothers who are old. It's not supposed to be the case. Also, the 
a prompting to sit with the people of istiqamah. That will help you. So if you want istiqamah, sit with the people who are istiqamah. Have company of those people who remind you of Allah. And also keep persisting on doing the good acts. Persistency doesn't mean a lot of acts. Even if it's little. أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ لِلَّهِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلْ The most beloved acts, as the Prophet of Allah, he said, the most beloved acts to Allah is the one who's consistent, yet even if it is little. So having little act, uh, but just affirm it. Keep doing it. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, كَانَ رَسُولَ سَلَّمْ إِذَا عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَثْبَتَهُ The Prophet of Allah used to be, every time he does an act, he will affirm it. He will make it running. He will make it persistent. Because persistency upon the amal uh, is better than making a lot of deeds and then suddenly stop. You know, some people think, mashallah, he's jumped deep into this religion. And qiyam, 11 rak'ah, moon, all siyam, day after the day, after one another. And then suddenly he stops for very late. This person who does less than him, he does maybe one rak'ah a night. But yes, it's persistent, okay? This is better than, uh, rewardable than the act, which is too much act, and then you stop. Being persisting on an act, even if it's little, it has the following uh, impacts. Number one, that your heart is in continuous of or continually in uh, in relationship and connection to the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will give it more istiqamah and more firmness. So remember that when you have consistency, your heart will have a, a live link up with the Almighty all the time. And that is istiqamah in itself. And also, when you have a deed which is persistent and you're all the time doing it, it's little, this thing, it will make the soul of yours, the nafs of yours, trained to abide itself, to stick itself and hook itself to the good all the time. And makes it easy for it as well. That's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, from the thing that he comes all the time in the Jumu'ah, first person, one day he came, fourth person. He found three people before him in the Jumu'ah. Uh, fourth, fourth, three people before him is the fourth one. So because he trained himself so much, himself became a nafsul lawam, reproaching soul, telling him off. Why did you come three people before? Why three people before you? So Allah ibn Mas'ud coming himself is saying, I'm the fourth of three people. I'm the fourth of the three people. It's not far away from the mercy of Allah. It's like saying to himself, please calm down. I know I made a mistake. I'm the fourth person. But inshallah, I'm not really far. I'm not that bad. Huh? Calm, down. calm down. He's training himself so much. It became self that is governing him, guarding him. Subhanallah. The person, listen to this. When you have istiqamah on the persistency of the good deeds, that means he's doing good deeds, he is little, this will be a savior from him, from those calamities, from those moments that you are in need of the Almighty's help. Abu Huraira radiallahu an narrates for us this immaculate hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Man sarrahu an yastajeeb Allahu lah, whom he is pleased for Allah azza wa jal, to respond to him in the in the time of hardship, in the time which is calamities. Let him increase in making dua in the time of prosperity. Person is all the time. Time of prosperity, he forgets about the Allah. But if you have remembered Allah in prosperity, Allah will remember you where? In calamity. If you want Allah to help you the calamities, remember Allah Azza wa Jal in this prosperity. So steadfastness is one of the reasons of salvation. Allahu A'lam. By this, alhamdulillah, we came to the end of what we plan to talk. And inshallah, we'll have the rest of the questions that I need to leave in the next 20 minutes. Barakallah. So if you have any questions, actually before Salat al -Isha. From a young age, she didn't put money in my bank account. Um, now that I'm heading 18 in April, would I have to give the cut of that money? Uh, there's a question here which is not related to our topic, which is typical. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, this, uh, call it trust fund, 
for the children, the government, they give the child some sort of money. I think it's 250 maybe. I don't know if it's gone up or not. When they are born. And this money that the parents can as well contribute by putting more money, but they can't take it out. And it will be uh, free from tax and all of this. And then the child will take it when he's 18 years old. So uh, presumably that this is now the money which has been uh, taken, uh, as I said, as part of the government, that you can't take it out because you're not allowed to put money and take riba from it. But this is there. So if the father and the parents had contributed to that, and I think in, there's a, rate, a limit for how much they could contribute every year. So let's say that this child ended up with 10,000 when he was 18 years old. Does he need to pay zakah? Now, the scholars are regarding the zakah of the child of two uh, opinions. One, there is, and one, there isn't. And this is based upon a hadith of Aisha, radiallahu anha, when she said, that is, uh, make this uh, money to be uh, functioning and to invest it uh, before zakah will eat it. Before the zakah will eat it. And this is to do with the children. And uh, this hadith, in, 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 in terms of authenticity, is in debate. And the correct opinion is not authentic. So there is no zakah on the children. There's no zakah on the children until they become adults. Now, if this the money had reached, if the money had reached the threshold and he became uh, adult, remember 18 years old is above his adulthood. When he is like say 15, then he will calculate his zakah when he's 15 years old. So he will give the zakah for when he's 15, when he's 16, when he's 17. He'll give the zakah of three years once he received the money. And remember, when he deduct the zakah of that, he will deduct, uh, he will first, for example, 10,000, let's say. So 10,000, you give 250 pounds. So 250 pounds. So the following year, you calculate now the zakah on 9,750. And the third year, it will be counted as less because you're taking the money out of it. Now, Any other questions? I'm not really uh, stopping you from asking anything that which is not to do with the deen. Uh, I'm okay with that. Anything as well, if you want the ones from the Zoom, put your hands up because, as I said, problem. Um, um, the person is angry at their spouse and they, they did a halal at the time of anger. Is there an expiation? So they, they, they regret what is the halif here? What is the what do they say? I will not eat this food or something. Okay. And then so somebody who is angry yeah. in a state of anger, regardless with his wife, I mean, or with his friend, in a state of anger. That's the question. He makes an oath. I'm not going to eat with you. I'm not going to enter. I'm not going to be doing something. Okay. This oath. It's nothing to do with anger. It's to do with, are you in full control of what you're saying? Are you in full awareness of what you're saying? That's the anger. If it is not, then you are drunk. You don't know what you're saying. But sometimes a person can make an oath while he's anger, just like I can make divorce while he's angry. But what type of anger that will wave out the consequences, that's the anger that the person doesn't know what he's saying. As soon as he says it, no, 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 I don't mean it. It stops. The oath, once you have the wordings and the intention behind the oath, and you haven't fulfilled that oath, you violated the oath, then you have to expiate. Expiation is slave, no slave to free, uh, fasting, sorry, uh, feeding 10 poor people, or for clothing 10 people, clothing 10 poor people. If you haven't, then you fast three days. It doesn't matter whether it's consecutively or each one on its own. So first, that is a choice between freeing a slave or feeding 10 people or clothing 10 people. If you haven't got that, then you go to the following, and that is fasting three days. You can't fast three days if you have got the ability to do the first three. What are the three? Now. 
Bye. Any other questions? From them. Who's the point of putting it like that? You are. Look at what you've done. I almost lost it. I'll pay you, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking now. That's why I'm really keep... Why the screen is going off? Why the screen is going off? <laughs> um, the, the, always, the person who's on the table is in charge of delivering. You guys, you're going to make him as comfortable as possible. So you put the microphone to him as close as possible. You put the electricity. That is going to be concerning with electric and all of this. And it's like a like a no, it's not true that the Muaddin will take more reward than the Khatib. That is not true. As for the more reward, it depends upon the sincerity in the heart. It could be one person inside the masjid who will have the most reward. So don't really say that uh, now we start to compare the reward between the Muaddin and the Imam and the Khatib and all of that. But each one he will have the reward. And the Mu'adhan, if he's not doing the Adhan according to the Sunnah, he might be sinned for that. And who are doing the Adhan according to the Sunnah? Very few. So the Mu'adhan in the Jum'ah, does he make Adhan inside the masjid when the Imam in front of him or away from him? That's number one question. Most of them, they make the Adhan in front of the Khatib. That's not correct. The Adhan is supposed to be either next to the door or outside. That's how it is. Alhamdulillah, some of the masjid, they champion the Sunnah. For example, our masjid in uh, Wise, they have the say salamu alaykum, the muaddin will be outside next to the door with his microphone, making the adhan. This vidah started from the time of the era of the Umawi, where the khatib stands salamu alaykum, and the muaddin will be in front of the khatib saying the adhan. It's not the case. So it's not correct that, in general, that the muaddin will have more reward. That depends upon the sincerity. And who is better, the Imam or the Muaddin? The Imam, in general. But the Muaddin could have more reward than the Imam. Again, same thing. But the Imam is responsibility. Imam is the high, the ultimate. Now, but any other questions? Sheikh, when we're about to pray Salah, we have the Atana door, and person says, La ilaha illallah, and then everyone says, like, La ilaha illallah, here a lot. Is this from the sunnah? Or... Yeah. And we, we, the thing is that uh, a mu'adhan says, Allah akbar, Allah akbar, you don't hear Allah akbar, Allah akbar from the people. Only when the mu'adhan says, La ilaha illallah, they say, La ilaha illallah loudly. I think it's not. They say, La ilaha illallah, even before the mu'adhan say, La ilaha illallah. As soon as the mu'adhan says, the last, Allah akbar, Allah akbar, they will say, La ilaha Before even the mu'adhan says, La ilaha illallah. That's the case, isn't it? SubhanAllah. This is something that I've seen it not just in this country. I have seen it in most of the countries. Like one person makes a bid'ah. This bid'ah just runs in the communities. The community. And I'm asking maybe every person, he must have experienced that. Just before the one that says, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha. One person he doesn't, and the other person is ignorant. He takes that ignorant as his sheikh. So sheikh ignorant, huh? The sheikh of an ignorant. Who's your sheikh? He took the Quran. He said it. Nobody said it. Good. La ilaha illallah. Go to the grave. When the person is being taken to the grave, you have to be buried. You see the person. The kalima. They bring the person from outside the chart. Kalima. Kalima is not. Say la ilaha illallah. Kalima. If somebody is knowledgeable, they should be there. Uh, uh, and to say, not to be now, not to be shy to say the haq. Not to be shut to what to say the hat. I heard this person say, Kalima said, No Kalima. Shh. No Kalima. Push. Oh, so, khalas, be quiet. He doesn't know. No Kalima. SubhanAllah. We only say, Alamilla Bismillah, Alamilla Ti Rasulullah, when you put him in the grave. But every time they put him in the car, Kalima, they take him out of the car, is Kalima, and all of those, not from the Sunnah of the Prophet. But as I said, if we are not doing what we're supposed to do, then we are. Failing to fulfill the following part of our task, and that is, Kuntum Khaira Ummatin Ukhrijat Linnas Ta'muruna Bil Ma'rufi Wa Tanhawna Anil Munkar Wa Tu'minuna Billah. You are the best of Ummas being sent to mankind. What is that thing that makes us the best of Ummah? And that is enjoying good, forbidding evil. 
and believing in Allah. That's what makes it the best, not because we are Arabs or Pakistani or, you know, Gora or no Gora. No, 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 no. It doesn't make us at all different from anybody else. It's the message. Pakistani laugh. They don't understand Gora. You don't understand Gora? Guru Gora? Nah. Fine. Any other question, Ikhwan, even coming to the end, closing, inshallah, sessions? Fine. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah, wa barakallahu fiqh.